is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We're so thankful that God has allowed us this opportunity. Amen. To offer him worship and praise. Amen. 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 And, and I, I want to say is we are in uh we're in going to our worship service. Amen. And we are looking forward to the message today from our pastor. Amen. And we're just praying that some lost soul will come to Christ on today. Amen. 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 So we want to set our minds straight. Amen. We know that God is worthy of all of all the praise. Amen. Because he is so good to all of us. Amen. 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 We're just blessed. Amen. Uh, on this day, which is prepared to be a busy day in the Lord. Amen. But yet the Lord is good to all of us. Amen. 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 We are we are so glad, amen, always to have this opportunity to be in the presence, be in, in God's presence, amen. 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 So we are truly blessed, amen. Amen. This little light of mine, you know I'm going to let it shine.
Lord, I want to thank you for today. Lord, I want to thank you that the Lord woke me up today. Please bless, bless the homeless. Please give them food. Give them things that they need to survive. Thank you for putting shoes on my feet, clothes on my back for the food that's on my table. Please bless everybody who needs help. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on, we can do that in a minute. Let's get it on Uh, so I'm encouraging you. I'm actually begging you 
So please just take an effort and just come meet us just one time. I bet you'll come back again. And if you can't do that, come for Sunday school. Pastors teach in Sunday school on the first Sundays of every month. We have well-capable teachers teaching the rest of the month. I promise you, you will learn. You will learn. And you'll see, we'll, we will see how messed up we are. Because we messed up, y'all. And I don't know about y'all, but I am. I'm real messed up. Real messed up. But God is good. And he's a forgiving God. And uh, one of the ladies this morning said that he forgives us and we don't even forgive ourselves. And we live in guilt because of some stuff that we done done that God has forgiven us. If we ask for it, he's already forgiven us from and we walk around with our head down like God ain't real. Like he ain't a man that his well, he's not a man that he should lie. But like he's not that his word is not true. So, yeah, we won't know these things if we ain't in Bible study. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, we have baptism certificates. Uh, Sister Rosemary Williamson. Amen. Sister Rosemary, Rosemary.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Man, God is so good. Man, I know how good God is. I know how good God be. Amen. Hallelujah.
Thank you for sharing your Holy Spirit in our lives, Lord. Then, Lord, I pray for the deacons also, Lord. Lord, that you would touch them, that you would spend to them. Lord, you just keep them and teach them your will and your way. And may they walk in all your way. And I thank you, Lord, for the pastor and the first lady. Then, Lord, I just thank you again for the pastor. He's a great teacher, Lord. Lord, he's a man of God. Lord, I ask you to continue to bless him and to keep him, Lord, and to teach him your word and that your word or two come out of his mouth. We just thank you, Lord, because it's already happened and we can see it. We just thank you, Lord, and ask you to continue to bless him, continue to give him your word that he may refer your word unto us. We just thank you, Lord, for your word. We just thank you for your truth. Thank you for your righteous judgment. We just thank you, Lord. Thank you, first of all, again, Lord, for being able to see this day. Then, Lord, you watched over all night long last night. Yeah, Lord, you saw us here safely this morning. We just thank you, Lord. We ask you to continue to be with us, go with us, give us traveling grace. Oh, Lord, let, let us help us to just lift you up. We're going to praise your name and tell you thank you and bless your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
break the rain this morning. Church members don't do well in the rain. We melt a little bit. We thank God for those who are yet here. Thank God for Mother Rogers, Mother Gloucester, here this morning. We pray for those mothers who are not here and need somebody to call them this week. Amen. But Mays told me, Pastor, whenever I'm not here, check on me. Because you know she loves the Lord. And if she's not here, then that means she's not well. So I'm asking you all uh, to check on our mothers today, this week. Got to go to uh, another church this afternoon. I'm going to try to be brief because I want to leave here at about 20 after. So I need to be preaching through preaching at about 5 or 10 after. Those who know the way, I pray I see you there safely. Those who don't know the way who want to follow me, I'm going to leave here like about 20 after. When my wife's car is red, you can't miss it. I have the flashes on. If, you, if you're following me, turn your flashes on. That way I can look in my mirror and see if anybody's been left behind. I want all of us to arrive safely. If you come and take your time, if you decide not to come, I understand because gas is high and it's raining outside. But I would love to see you there. So I'm not going to be long. I thank God for these deacons. They, they know I got a load on me. They take a load off of me. I thank God for that. You can change my take it easy. Amen. Because he won't be the last of a while. And Brother James, I want to ask a while too. I thank God for all of you all new saints. I want you to know I love you. Amen. Sometimes we don't say that enough. Or sometimes we take it lightly. Amen. But, but, but let me just say this when somebody loves you, that puts a responsibility on you. Amen. To receive the love. And you receive the love by demonstrating it. And I want to see you in heaven. And that's why we had such a powerful Sunday school this morning. Mm. Don't, don't do no good to talk about heaven and don't go. So I don't talk about Poland too much. You don't hear me talk about Poland at all. Because I don't plan to go. Amen. But I try to talk about heaven all the time. Amen. I'm not to remind you to remind myself that I have a destiny in mind. And if I'm going to make that trip, I need to be prepared to go. Sad enough, far too many of us not really prepared to go where we say we want to go. Amen. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I'm going to try to be brief. My wife looked at me real funny. I use that term brief preaching. She saying ain't got no sense. <laughs> well, let me say I'm gonna be expeditious. That's a long word. Expeditious means I can take a long time. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Listen, I have a few more of these. Blake. Been making these, and he made me something so pretty today. I want to hung up on my wall. It's in my study. And I'm proud of it. I thank. Wave your hand, brother Blake. Amen. We thank God. Amen. Have a having a giving spirit is a sign of being born again. Romans eight eighteen. Y'all pray with me. Romans chapter 8, 18 through 21. Paul says these famous words. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. God's word for God's people. And just for a minute, Jesus is worth it. Amen. 
Despite how broke you are, despite how tired you are, despite how sad you are, despite how distressed you are, despite how low you are, despite how disturbed you may be, despite how angry you may be, despite how heavy your grief or how bitter your tears, I want you to know that whatever you're going through, Jesus is worth it. Amen. We, we prioritize our activities based on the value or expected return of these tasks. If we don't think we're going to get something returned, then we don't put any effort out. Amen. But the more we feel we can get out of it, the more eager we are to do it. Even if somebody tells you there's nothing to it, if we won't rest until we do it, if we think on our own there's something in it. Right. A farmer will spend months planting, watering, and chopping what he cannot see because he realizes in the end it's going to be worth it. All of you here go to work 40 hours every week. Each day, not getting a dime. But you keep going, being on time, hitting the clock, because you know payday is going to be worth it. We send our kids to school for 12 long years. All the time we're buying books, buying clothes, buying lunches, paying for field trips. Because one way, one day sooner or later, we know it's going to pay off. Not only in our secular lives, but the same thing spiritually. True believers dedicate their lives and their service to Christ, sometimes to the outer world for seemingly nothing in return because they know more than the unbeliever that it's worth it. And even though it's not often recognized that every day the Lord is blessing. But there are many who deny the value in the work of serving this Jesus Christ we serve. Even worse than that, there are those who claim to have faith in him but you never see them at work. Their mouths say they believe Jesus is worth it, but their actions say something totally different. When it comes to the Lord, they always got something more pressing, something more important to do, and they just don't have time, amen, to give the Lord. And so we drag ourselves to worship on Sunday every once in a while because we don't think showing up every Sunday is worth it. We give a dollar instead of a tithe because we don't feel like the Lord is worth a whole tithe. Are you all here with me? We don't see the value in visiting the hospitals, in visiting jails, going to nursing homes, unless it's our own family member. Are you all here with me? And because and, and when it comes to others, we're quick to say it don't take all that. Then say not only that, but say that uses other folk to make us believe it's not worth it. Are you all hearing me aside from what's going on in your own mind, he'll put folk in your life, amen, to make you feel foolish for serving the Lord. That's why the St. Paul said, I don't mind being a fool for Christ's sake. Muslims will tell you you're serving the wrong color God. Jehovah's Witnesses tell you you're serving the wrong, you're looking for the wrong heaven. Seven day Adventists say you're worshiping on uh, the wrong day. The Jews tell us you're serving the wrong God. Even when you get to church, you find folk in here still fussing and fighting. And then when you get home, your telephone never stops ringing from one church member talking about another. I need a little help, New Salem. Amen. Everybody in the church is sending everybody else to hell. And so we all going to hell. What's the use of going to church? Are y'all hear me? And eventually, no matter how holy or sanctified you are, you're going to find your own name caught up in a lie sooner or later because somebody's going to talk about you. Amen. If you lie, they're going to call you a liar. If you don't lie, they're going to call you a liar because they say everybody lies. I just need a little help. I'm almost, I'm almost out of here. I'm about to wrap this thing up right here. Listen. Every time you feel a smile in your face, you feel a knife in your back. If you shake hands with somebody too long, they're going to say you're cold. Now, y'all hear with me? <laughs> if, you, if, if you get happy and start shouting, they're going to say you're fake. And look at the devil shout in the aisle. Now, y'all hear with me? And so you begin to wonder, is it worth it because I can stay at home and do bad by myself? Y'all hear in this text, this is Apostle Paul is writing. And he just got through talking about himself in chapter 7. Paul says, when I look at myself, as long as I've been preaching, 
as much as I've been through, I'm still a wretch. A wretch undone. He said, I've been lied on, talked about, perplexed, distressed, shipwrecked, robbed, beaten, talked about, but I'm still a wretch. I still got a thorn in my side that God won't remove because God uses the thorn in my side as the steering wheel of my soul. Y'all just miss what I said. He said, I left the thorn in your side when I used the thorn to drive you just like a farmer drives a mule. Are y'all here with me? Sometimes I had to pull left and make this straight up, and sometimes I had to pull right. But those thorns in your flesh are there for a reason. Are y'all here? They're there to remind you of who you are and who I am and whose you are. Are y'all hear me? And so Paul said in his previous chapter, he said, this is what I found out about me. Yes, as good a preacher as I am, mm -hmm. I found it in myself that is no good thing. He said, I found out that my own heart is the place where spiritual warfare takes place between heaven and hell. Are y'all y'all hear me? He said, and, and the warfare is so strong, he said, every time I try to do good, yes. evil is always around me. He said, that's some bad stuff I don't want to do, but I, I get to can't help it. I just look like I just can't help myself. It looked like my car just always drive the wrong way. It looked like I'm always jumping the wrong bed. Look like I'm always drinking the wrong thing. Look like I'm always not always finding my stuff just right. Every time I try to go straight, something in my life is driving me crooked. I know the Lord, I know his word, but something gets a hold of me. And it seems like I can't help myself. So the good I would, I would not. And that I don't want to do, I do. I don't know what's wrong with me. Y'all hear? Paul. Paul said this thing is rough sometimes. He said, aside from folk doing me wrong. He said, I keep on praying to the Lord to remove my thorns. And he told me his grace. It's sufficient. Are y'all hear me? And Paul said, sometimes I wonder, is serving the Lord worth it? And so he comes over in the chapter 8 after considering his struggles in chapter 7. And he said, sometimes you got to talk to yourself. Sometimes you got to speak louder than the enemy in your ear. Sometimes you got to overtalk the devil that is trying to take control of your mind. He keeps on telling you that it ain't no use to turn around and throw you in the top. But Paul said, when I look at what Jesus has done in my life, when I look at what the Lord means to me, when I look at what he brought me through, when I look at how many times he dried my tears, when I look at how many times he calmed my fears, when I look at how many times he brought me over river that were too wide to cross, over mountains that were too hard to climb, when I look back over my life, I begin to realize that I didn't get here by myself, but if it had not been for the Lord, Lord, uh, who was on my side, I begin to wonder where I would be. Uh, who was it uh, that saved me when I was shipwrecked? Uh, not worried about who shipwrecked me, uh, but the Lord saved me. Uh, I got to stop wondering uh, why they robbed me. Uh, but me and tell God, thank you, uh, that they didn't kill me. Uh, I got to stop complaining uh, about my sleepless nights, uh, but begin to tell God, thank you, uh, that you woke me up this morning. Uh, because when I'm running with myself, I ought to realize that I should have been dead, sleeping in my grave. Thank God, all right. Paul said, Sometimes I get to think my sermon sounds so good. I start thinking I'm holy. Sometimes the Holy Ghost let this song sound so good. I start thinking I'm somebody. When folks start standing up saying amen. I get caught up uh, and think they praising me uh, instead of praising 
to my God. So I had to remind myself, it's not about me. It's about the God I serve. I can't sing enough. I can't preach enough. I can't praise enough. But if the Lord don't show up, ain't nothing going to happen. And I wonder here today, how many of you out there praying that the Lord showed up in your life? So Paul said, yes, I've had some sleepless nights. He said, yes, I've had some crying days. Yes, I've had some trials as a tribulation. But I've come too far to turn around now. I got to realize that despite all of my tears and despite my fears, despite my struggles and despite my troubles, I got to realize that God is worth everything I'm going through. He's worth every tear I shed. He's worth every sigh I made. He's worth every step I made when I'm walking the floor all night long. And that's why the St. Paul said that no matter what happened in my life, I would let nothing separate me from the love of my God in Christ Jesus. Is there somebody here? Are you going through something? Paul said, don't let it turn you around. And God, all right, slow down your step. Listen. About five minutes and I'm through. Paul said that I'm going through some suffering. I can't deny it. He said, I can't deny I got enemies. I can't deny I got folk against me. I can't deny I got opposition. I can't deny that I'm under stress and strain. And yes, Paul said, yep, yeah, I'm suffering. He said, I got to realize Jesus didn't come to save me from suffering. He came to save me from my sin. He didn't come to save me from my heartaches. He came to make a way for me to get to heaven. Are y'all here with me? And he said, I, I come to realize that I, I, if I don't go through something, God can't prepare me. But what I'm going through, the Lord is using for my good. Because he's trying to prepare me for something I can't handle right now. He's making me worthy just because he cares. So he said, when I look at my suffering and I put them on the scale and I weigh them to compare to what Jesus has already done, I begin to realize the Lord is worth it. When I take all of my past suffering and put it in the balance and see what God is keeping me through right now, I begin to realize the Lord is still worth it. When I look at what I went through yesterday and compared to what God has for me tomorrow, I begin to realize no matter what happened yesterday, the Lord is what I got to go through Salem. And so he said, I reckon that the suffering of this present age are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in the Oh yeah, I'm going through a little something, but somebody told me somewhere that crying was nothing but my strength at home. When you see on my knees, I'm just washing my robe. Get ready! <laughs> he said, the suffering of the present time are not worthy to be compared. He said, first of all, because of God's past provisions. In verse 20, he said, well, the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected him to the same hope. When we look at us, versus our parents, we see that we have no right to run with the pain. Our parents had very little, and they complained very little. But we got a whole lot, and we always complaining about something. Our parents had to read the Bible by candlelight, and you won't read it by the LEDs in your house. They rode wagon and knew the church. If they didn't have a wagon on you, they had to walk. But somehow, they always came. Are y'all here with me? They sat in churches on planks. They didn't have cushion cues 
to make them go to sleep. They had cinder blocks and planks. They had no air conditioning, no PA system. If they had a piano, they didn't have all the keys. And they had a pianist who couldn't play it, but they would bang out enough music to make heaven happen. Are, are, are you all hear me? You didn't see them in fancy suits with dresses. Everybody had on overalls. Amen. And, and, and nobody's hat was fixed. And, and everybody smelled the same way. Are you all here? And so nobody could talk about nobody else because they all had just come from the cotton field. Are y'all hear what I mean? But they took time out of the cotton field to come and tell God thank you because they realized that no matter what they were going through right now, no matter how the taskmaster whipped them, no matter how the plantation owner can make them come short, they knew after a while payday was coming someday. They had a song to say, if I can just hold out to the mall, uh, I know everything will be all right. But, so they said it's worth it if you look to Jesus because he has done great things. Uh, what did he do? Well, they tell me he gave up for seeding glory. He wrapped himself up in flesh. He came all the way down through 40 generations. Uh, Isaiah told him, he said he was wounded by our transgressions. Uh, he was bruised by our iniquity. The chastisement of our species upon him and by his stripes we are healed. He was a man of sorrow, was acquainted with grief, and he bore our burdens and in the heat of the day. Are you all healing me? And he what had he done? Paul said that he was headed for, for God permitted his love for us. That while we were yet sinners, God died for us. What did he do, John? John said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so the writer said, When I look back over my life, when I see what God has done for me, when I think things over, he said, I am a living testimony. One writer said, I've had tears and sorrow. I've had questions for tomorrow. There's been time when I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave me consolation that trials come only to make me strong. He said, through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. But not only is it the provision of the past, he said it's worth it because of my present prosperity. In verse 19, he says, for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the Son of God. Not only has God done great things, but he's still doing it right now. The Bible said he came from glory, but he went back to say the right hand of the Father to plead our case. That's why the psalmist said, oh God, I help him. In ages past, I strip in years to come. I, I present from the he is our present help in time of trouble. Paul recognized that the present age is full of suffering. Job said that a man born of a woman is but a few days and they're full of trouble. Paul said, when I seek to do good, evil is always around. He goes on to say that he's troubled on every side. But he began to realize that despite his trials and his tribulation, that the Lord he served is still with it. That's why he said uh, he is a very present help uh, in time of trouble. Uh, I heard uh, a songwriter saying uh, that every time uh, I turn around, uh, the Lord uh, keep blessing me. Uh, and there's another blessing uh, come my way. Uh, we've not been dressed uh, like we've been dressed today uh, all of our life. Uh, just a little while ago, uh, your best dress uh, was model old. Curtains, uh, am I here uh, all by myself? Uh, we've not always been driving church uh, in shiny cars. Uh, just a little while ago, uh, what you drove was smoking. Uh, if it wasn't smoking, uh, it was rattling. Uh, if it wasn't rattling, uh, it was knocking. Uh, thank God, all right. Uh, you didn't go up uh, drinking the sunny water uh, from a nice cold bottle. Uh, it wasn't long ago. Uh, that you went back down uh, to Grandma Well uh, and you dipped the dipper. Uh, thank God, all right. Uh, you got to know uh, 
uh, that you didn't always have uh, a house like you had. Uh, now uh, you got your own room, uh, your own bed, uh, your own TV, uh, your own bathroom uh, for everybody uh, in one house. Uh, don't you remember uh, when everywhere uh, was somebody's bedroom? Uh, somebody uh, slept under the table. Uh, somebody uh, slept under the closet. Uh, your pillow uh, in the one time uh, was a summer clothes. Uh, and your pillow uh, in the summertime uh, was a one clothes. Uh, don't you remember uh, that you didn't go uh, to the store to buy your clothes? Uh, you had to wait a little while uh, until your older brother uh, and your older sister uh, grew out of what they were wearing uh, for what you to get uh, to put on your back. Uh, when you look in the mirror, uh, your hair uh, ain't always looked uh, like it looked right now. Uh, when I was a child, uh, every Saturday night, uh, our kitchen uh, was full of smoke and grease. Uh, Y'all don't hear me uh, on Sunday morning uh, when I looked at my sisters. Uh, if they didn't have a burn uh, on their forehead, uh, they had a burn uh, on the ear. Uh, if they didn't have a burn on the ear, uh, there was a burn uh, behind their neck. Uh, man, uh, let me get you to uh, now you want to wear a twist. You want to go to the barber shop and get arrows cut in your head. Don't you remember on Saturday night when Mama took you to the kitchen and pulled out a bowl, sat it on your head, and went all the way around. You were sitting there crying, but you couldn't say nothing. Ain't God all right? We need to recognize that that is a blessing and serving the truth and living God. One writer said, everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Who I show you all last night, God did it. Who woke you up right early this morning, God did it. And every day of my life, He keeps on blessing me. And God I got to leave you now, but I never shall forget what he's done for me. I never shall forget how he set me free. I've had some good days, and I've had some bad days. So nothing I've had, some hills to climb. But when I look around, and I think things over, all of my good days, I'll wait my bad days, and I won't complain. I'm going here now, but the Lord is good. He has the vision present prosperity, and the promises he pronounced, Paul compelled uh, this present time uh, with the glory uh, which shall be revealed uh, in us. Uh, in other words, Paul said, uh, I don't have it right now, uh, but wait a little while. Uh, everything is uh, going to be all right. Uh, if you don't believe me, uh, follow my Jesus. Uh, can't you see him uh, on Thursday night? Uh, on Thursday night, uh, he had 39 lashes uh, in his back uh, on Thursday night. Uh, he had 72 thorns uh, cursing his blood. Uh, on Thursday night, uh, he would be so bad uh, that Tyler didn't recognize him. Uh, and on top of that, uh, on Friday morning, uh, they cut two trees, uh, sent him marching up a hill called Tyler. 39 lashes, uh, 72 thorns, uh, three nails in his body. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, they tell me uh, he hung his head uh, in the locks of his shoulder uh, and uh, he died. Uh, until heaven got the news. Uh, after he died, uh, they stood him in his side uh, and they buried him uh, in a bar of tomb. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, look at your situation. Uh, the well may think you're dead. The world may think you're buried up in a bar or tomb. But just like my Jesus, you can't look at me now to tell about my tomorrow. My tomorrow don't look like my yesterday. Ain't God all right. I may be dead in a grave right now. But after a while, I'm going to rise in the name of Jesus. Ain't God all right. They tell me 
thing uh, that right in uh, Sunday morning uh, my breeze uh, over so water uh, right in my Sunday morning, uh, my joy, uh, in time of sorrow, uh, he got up, uh, stood on cemetery soil, uh, shook down a dash out, uh, somebody said, Jesus, uh, why did you shake it down? Uh, I shook down uh, all of your sorrow, I shook down uh, all of your tears, I shook down uh, all of your heartache, I shook down uh, all of your pain, thank God. All right, and some glad moment when I can read my title clear to a mansion in the sky. I'm going to bid farewell to all my trouble and wipe my weeping eye. I'm going now to a land where the sun never go down. Always had it, had it, and never goodbye. I'm going now where the don't see from traveling up and the weary don't be red up. Thank God, all right. Do you want to go? Is there anybody here? Do you want to see Jesus? I need somebody to help me lift Jesus. I need somebody to help me pray in his name. If God's been good to you, say yeah. If God brought you through, go to church over. Don't trip no more. I'm through.